Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel. In the first episode we talk about choosing the aquarium, filter, heater and where to place the aquarium. Today, in episode 2, we'll discuss other essential elements to create a balanced and healthy environment for your fish. Lighting, substrate, decoration and plants. Lightning in an aquarium is important, but not just so you can see your fish swimming. If you have live plants, light is absolutely uh, vital for photosynthesis. But be careful, not all light are suitable for this. So, basically, without light, the plants will die, right? Most likely, uh, yes, Rick. Just like land plants, aquatic plants need light to survive. But to get good results, not just any light will do. Ideally, you need a light with the right spectrum, one that mimics natural uh, sunlight as closely as possible. And if I just use a regular house lamp, will that work? Not quite, Rick. House lamps usually don't have the right spectrum for plant growth. For planted tanks, you need specific LED or fluorescent lights that meet the plant's needs, typically between 6000 and 500K or uh, 8000K. K as in what? Kilometers? <laughs> no, Rick. The K stands for Kelvin, which is the unit of color, temperature for light. Basically, the higher the number, the cooler or bluer the light. For aquatic plants, the uh, color temperature between 6.5000K or uh, 8000K mimics the sunlight needs for photosynthesis. So, how long should I keep the light on? The fish need to sleep, right? Good question. Ideally, keep the lights on uh, for about 8 to 10 hours a day. Less than that and the plants won't have enough time for photosynthesis. More than that and you risk having too much algae. And yes, fish need to rest too. So turn the lights off at night or leave a dim uh, light so they can see just enough and not get stressed. Okay, I get it. Lights on during the day. Happy plants, controlled algae. Got it. Exactly, Rick. But there are different types of lights you can use. There are light bars and spotlights. Light bars usually cover a larger area, spreading the light more evenly. Spotlights tend to mimic a natural habitat, with lights in some areas and shades in others. And when should I use one or the other? It depends on the size of the tank, but if you have plants, Spotlights works better for low-maintenance plants, like Anubias, Echinodorus or Java ferns. Light bars are better for planted tanks, with more demanding plants. Okay, I think I get it. So for a beginner with low maintenance plants, a spotlight will do. Yes, but you can also use a light bar if you prefer. Either works fine. Now that we know how to light the tank, let's talk about what we put at the bottom. The substrate. Oh, but can't I just put anything there? Like beach sand? No, Rick. The substrate is one of the most important elements for the uh, health of your plants and the aquarium in general. It not only gives a plant a place to root, but it also affects water quality and the well-being of your fish. So, which one should I choose? Are there different types? Yes, there are many types and depends on what you want for your tank. For planted tanks, the ideal is a fertile uh, substrate that promotes nutrients for the plant's roots. There are specific substrate rich in minerals, like latrin or clay, that promotes healthy plant growth. And if I don't have plants? If you don't have plants, you can use a simpler substrate, like sand or gravel. But even without plants, the substrate helps create a natural environment for the fish and provides a place for ben beneficial bacteria to grow, which is essential for the nitrogen cycle. So, if I just put gravel, that's fine. Yes, you can use it, but remember that the size of the gravel matters. If it's too large, it can trap leftover food and waste. 
which can affect water quality. Medium-sized gravel is best. Can I mix sand and gravel? You can, but you need to be careful. Sand is very fine and can compact, making it harder to water and nutrients to flow to the plant roots. If you mix them, make sure there's enough gravel around the roots to allow circulation so the roots don't rot. This way, the sand won't accumulate as much and the roots can breathe. Now, let's get to the fun part, decorating the aquarium. But even with decoration, there are some things to keep in mind. I thought I could just throw some rocks and driftwood in and be done. Not quite, Rick. Decoration isn't just for looks. It also affects the fish behavior. Rocks, driftwoods and natural plants can create hiding spots, which reduce fish stress and give them places to explore and set up territories. So, can I use any rock or piece of wood I find outside? You need to be careful when putting outdoor materials in your tank. Some rocks can change the water pH and untreated or resinous uh, driftwoods can release harmful substances that can hurt your fish. It's best to buy materials specifically for aquariums. Or, if you find something in nature, make sure it's free of sap, completely inert and fully dried. It should be treated and tested before putting it in the tank. To be safe, I recommend getting them for a specialty store to avoid any problems. What about plastic decorations? Can I put a castle for the fish to live in? If you ask me, I'd say no, because in my opinion, they look awful. But everyone has their own taste and tastes are subjective. You can use plastic decoration, but make sure they're aquarium safe. Some non-specific materials can release toxic chemicals. And remember, the less artificial the environment, the more comfortable your fish will be. Always try to create a setup that mimics their natural habitat. Hum, okay, forget the castle. I'll look for some cool rocks and wood instead. I would do the same. It looks nicer and it's better for the fish. Now, let's talk about plants. Adding plants to your tank not only makes it look beautiful, but also helps keep the water quality in check. Oh no, more plants? I already have to water the ones in the living room. Now in the aquarium too? <laughs> you don't have to water them. Rick, in the aquarium, plants take nutrients for both the substrate and the water. Plus, they help consume nitrates and control algae growth. Some floating plants even block the light, helping to regulate lighting. So, can I use any plant? Can I throw in some lettuce leaves? No, Rick, no latches. There are specific aquatic plants for aquariums, like Anubias, Echinodores and Java ferns, which are hardy and easy to care for. Some grow fast and help keep the ecosystem balanced. Do they all need to be planted in the substrate? No, not all of them. There are floating plants, like Salvinia, that don't need the substrate. Some, like Anubias, can be attached to driftwoods or rocks and don't need to be buried. That sounds practical. I'm going to fill the tank with those plants. Take it slow, Rick. Too many plants can overwhelm the aquarium, specifically if you don't have a good lighting or fertilization. Start with a few easy to care for plants and see how the system adapts. So, we've talked about lighting, substrate, decoration and plants. Each of these elements is essential to creating a healthy and beautiful aquarium. In the next episode, we'll dive into aquarium maintenance and how to keep everything balanced over the long term. All right, I'm all set. A disco light, a nice carpet of plants, and a castle for my fish. Or maybe not. That really looks awful. Don't do it, please. And that's it, my friends. This was another episode on how to start in the aquarium hobby. I hope you enjoy and learn something new. Don't forget to like, comment, share, 
button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next episodes. Thank you for your support and I'll see you in the next one. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you.